my name is uh, Dave McComb. I'm a mechanical engineer uh, doing R&D at uh, Blake Hill Food Control. Uh, in the past, we've done some experiments on uh, efficiency and how pulsation dampeners affect the efficiency of positive displacement pumps. Uh, we've done recently some uh, a little bit more extensive um, R&D and research and measurements on, on that. And we're here to talk about that today. We're going to go over um, several different kinds of pumps, um, uh, parasaltic pumps, uh, we're going to go over air operated diaphragm pumps and some metering pumps and we're going to look at the energy used over time and we're looking at some pressure graphs. This is a two and a half inch parasaltic pump or also called a hose pump. Uh, we've got a pulsation dampener with a valve on the bottom of that we can take it in and out of the of the system and compare the efficiency. We did a, a number of different tests with this pump and Here's the results of one of them. Uh, we've got the energy, the watt hours that we uh, recorded on the one side and the time on the bottom. We took kind of this over a five minute interval. And we had a back pressure valve, just a ball valve um, that was partially closed to put a little back pressure in the system. Uh, with the dampener in the system, we were seeing a 9.5% decrease in the energy that's used with the, uh, with the pump. And that was at 15 PSI uh, basic uh, pressure uh, in the dampened state. The valve was in the same position for both tests. And there you can see the, uh, the graph. The pressure goes up to about 60 PSI without the dampener and then back to almost zero. And with the dampener, it's kind of fluctuating around um, 15 is kind of the peak pressure. So quite a bit higher pressure without the dampener and that puts more work on the pump. Here's another test we did, same pump, same setup, just with a different setting on our back pressure valve. Uh, it's a little bit higher pressure and so the efficiency there was a little bit better. It's 12% um, decrease in the energy that was used. And here we did the same pump again and or that, this here is the pressure graph with the same pump and uh, here it's going a little above 60 psi. No, almost 65, and the pressure is a little higher, of course. But efficiency is 12%, which is significant. All right, here's another test we did. Same pump, uh, this is a different setup. We had no back pressure whatsoever. We just, we hooked uh, 202 feet of two inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe, and we just kind of ran that out, and then back into a tank, and then we just ran it, just like that. Uh, we got a 3.9% increase, which is significant being there's no, it's just, uh, that's just moving the fluid. And there are some cases when um, uh, that people will have, where they're just moving fluid from one place to another. And you wouldn't think that you would get much increase, but you know, 3.9% is significant. Uh, the pressure graph is quite interesting with this one. If you look uh, closely in the dampened state, the blue line there, you can see the pulses and then the kind of uh, the valleys in between the, uh, the pulses as the shoe passes. And you'll notice that there is half as many pulses in the undampened state. This is because of the resonant frequency of the pipe. It just happens to be such that uh, you know, the, the pulses, you're, you're seeing one pulse, every other pulse off the shoe. It's kind of a weird situation um, and unique. And you can also see that the pressure goes way below zero um, down to, what, about minus eight PSI, which is pretty, uh, quite a bit in this application. And so the, the water is just kind of pulsing back and forth inside the pipe. Um, resonant, yeah, every piping system will have some kind of a resonant frequency and you know that affects 
the system performance. All right, we also did the same setup with uh, our 202 feet of pipe and we had a uh, back pressure valve on the end of it to kind of simulate an increase in elevation or um, resistance of, of some type. We had 15 PSI in the dampened state and we got uh, better efficiency of course because there's higher pressure in the system. Four and a half percent increase and there's the here's a picture of the uh, the pressure graph uh, with and without the dampener and we're going to about 50 psi it's less than without the the piping system the, the piping system has a little bit especially PVC will dampen it a little bit so four and a half percent increase though is uh, fairly substantial especially if you have a whole lot of pumps uh, here's Here's a picture we have another pump. This is an inch and a quarter, a fairly small um, parasaltic pump, um, generally used in metering. And it's got a variable frequency drive on it. It's fairly efficient. And uh, we have, have the same situation. We've got a, a ball valve that's uh, providing back pressure to the system. And we were seeing um, about 18 psi max on the in the uh, dampened state, uh, but the energy increases uh, substantially more with this pump than the other pump. Uh, in this case, we were seeing 26.1 percent increase or uh, in efficiency with a dampener. Well, that'll add up pretty fast. Uh, here's a pressure graph of that uh, if, of that setup. We tried several different ones, which I've got graphed here. Um, pretty sharp rise in pressure and then a uh, sharp fall. Uh, here's another test we did, uh, just adjusting the valves a little bit. We were seeing uh, significantly higher peak pressure, and we got 34.1% improvement in efficiency, which is very substantial. That's the best one we got on all the tests that we, we had. And there's the graph of that. And here's another um, same pump. Uh, we, we did a different setup. We have 180 feet of half inch copper pipe hooked it into this thing. And we saw an increase in efficiency of 5.6%. Uh, um, <clears throat> The pressure graph, if you look at it, it's a little bit more stable, not quite as, uh, as high a peak in pressure, and, and not as much difference between the, uh, the highest pressure and the dampened pressure, which kind of makes sense, why, why the efficiency is 5.6% instead of the 30%. All uh, right, we, another setup we did with that, a little bit higher pressure. Um, on the dampened side, and oh no, actually this is a different pump. This is a uh, diaphragm metering pump, and we got a 17% increase in efficiency with this pump. We didn't do too many tests with this pump. We probably should do some more, but um, they all kind of showed the same uh, response. Uh, here's a here's the pressure graph over time of that pump, uh, dampened and undampened. Uh, pretty sharp increase in uh, pressure with that pump. All right, we also tested some air-operated diaphragm pumps. This is a one-inch pump and uh, with the dampener in it. It's also got a valve there so we can take it in and out of the system without changing anything else. Um, it's got a ball valve uh, for back pressure. And for um, air-operated diaphragm pump, being the pumps are how they are, uh, you have a diaphragm that moves and there's a specific volume that it's going to move and there's a specific volume that it's going to take in as far as air goes. So it's going to move, it's going to use about the same amount of air, but what does change is the rate of the pumping. And so uh, in, in this case, in this test that we did, we see a, um, uh, the pressure graph over time, dampened and undampened. 
and we have a 4.6% pumping rate increase uh, with the dampener. And that's because the dampener kind of takes out those peaks and so the, um, and the pump doesn't have to accelerate the whole mass of the fluid in the line. And so it pumps a little bit faster with a dampener. 4.6%, that adds up a little bit. You can reduce your pressure in your airline, uh, which saves uh, money and get the same amount of uh, material being pumped. Uh, another test with the same pump, uh, we've got a little bit higher pumping pressure and um, higher efficiency, 12.8%, uh, which is quite significant. And we also tested a 2-inch uh, air-operated diaphragm pump and got similar results. Uh, this is at a low, about 20 PSI in the dampened state, and uh, we have a 2.5% increase in uh, uh, the rate that we are pumping fluid with the dampener. All right, there's another test with the same pump, a uh, little shorter period of time on this test. Same results, though. Um, higher pressure, we're about 50 PSI and dampened and we got 6.1% increase in the rate that the pump is pumping. Uh, another, another test with the same pump, this is a, this is a higher pressure, seven, about 75 PSI, and we got 7.7% increase. Um, there's a, we've got kind of a little animated picture of a, how an air operated diaphragm pump works. As you can see, the yellow section here um, is where the air comes in and moves the, uh, the diaphragm over. The blue section is where it's pulling the, the water in and, and out. Um, pretty much going to get the same volume yeah, every time the, the um, diaphragm moves a specific distance. Uh, here's a little animation of a peristaltic pump. Um, as you can see, the, uh, it kind of pinches off the hose as, it, uh, as the shoe goes around and pushes it out the other side. Uh, if there's more pressure in the line, there's going to be more resistance to that motion, and that's why we have an uh, increase in efficiency with the uh, dampener in place, because it lowers that maximum pressure. Uh, same with a diaphragm metering pump. Uh, you've got, a, uh, or, or a piston pump for that matter. Um, the pressure that the pump sees is the pressure as it is discharging the fluid. Um, the, the water coming in or the fluid that's coming into the pump, uh, if there is negative pressure, then uh, that will make a difference as well. And uh, inlet stabilizers can help that a little bit. You'll see the most efficiency increase on the outlet side because of the magnitude of the pressure that you can get on the outlet side. So, um, <clears throat> uh, we kind of discussed a couple of the reasons of the efficiency, but here they are again. Uh, the amount of energy that the pump uses is proportional to the discharge pressure uh, in the pump outlet. So, even if the average pressure is the same with and without a dampener, the pump sees the, the pressure as it is discharging the fluid. And if that's high, and you can measure that with a pressure transducer, and you, the pump is working harder, and so it uses more energy. Uh, lower, so if we, if we lower the spikes and kind of flatten it out so it's even, you're going to see an increase in efficiency in your system or you're going to use less electricity, um, which is, uh, especially if you have a whole lot of pumps, can make a significant difference. Uh, for AOD pumps, of course, you're going to use the same amount of air, same volume of air uh, to fill the chamber, but you can reduce the pressure, which uh, can substantially decrease your cost. Um, <clears throat> steady flow. Um, minimizes the acceleration 
um, that the pump has to do to the fluid. If it's accelerating a whole mass of fluid that's in the line, that takes a lot of energy. Then it stops when, it, uh, when it's taking its inlet stroke and then starts again when it starts pumping on its outlet stroke again. The dampener smooths that out, kind of takes that pulse and then feeds it out uh, steadily over time. Less work for the pump. So, for <clears throat> uh, conclusion of what we found, for AOD pumps, we got 2.5 to 12% increase in uh, pumping rate. And parasaltic pumps, uh, we got 3.9 to 34.1% decrease in energy used over time. Could be a huge decrease in cost for, uh, for a company over time. Uh, and diaphragm metering pumps, uh, I'd like to uh, test a few more of those. We have uh, one in-house that we tested and it got 17% improvement, which it again is very significant. So the uh, conclusion is it all depends on the outlet pressure uh, or your discharge pressure that the pump is seeing of how much increase in efficiency that uh, you're going to get but it's significant. In it, and in every case we tested, there was an improvement in efficiency by adding the damper.